Well, ladies and gentlemen, after that incredible partner, AV, it is time to move on to the last session of the day between Naval Ahuja, co-founder, Exchange for Media, and Suparna Mitra, CEO, Watches and Wearable Division, Titan. Well, Suparna is an electrical engineer from the Jadavpur University and an MBA from IIM Kolkata. She has an extensive business experience, mainly in lifestyle retail marketing area. She started her career as a management trainee in Hindustan Unilever. Subsequently, she joined Titan, where she has worked on several roles in marketing, both international and domestic. The next stint was Talisma Corp as a director of product marketing. She moved on to then becoming the business head lead in Arvind Brands Limited. She rejoined a Titan and became the global marketing head Titan, where she was responsible for all the marketing in India and international markets. After this stint, she was the regional business head South for Titan Company Limited, where she was heading all the businesses of Titan Company Limited, including watches, jewelry and eyewear for the South region. So ladies and gentlemen, please uh, help me and join me in welcoming Naval Ahuja, co-founder Exchange for Media, and Suparna Mitra, CEO, Watches and Wearables Division, Titan. With this, the stage and screen is all yours. Over to you. Hello and welcome to this special session with Suparna Mitra. As you know, Suparna is the CEO of Titan Wearables and Watches. Suparna joins us today in this keynote session just before we start the award ceremony. Thank you, Suparna, for joining us. Thank you, Naval. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, and I also want to thank you for spending significant time with us to chair the jury for the Indian Content Marketing Awards. Content marketing is a space that has evolved significantly in the last few years. For those of us with some gray hair will remember television used to have a format called AFP, Advertiser Funded Programs, that started some 30 years back on Doordarshan. And that uh, entire piece has now evolved in uh, you know, various uh, shapes and forms on uh, digital. Uh, we will touch upon a few areas in content marketing today during this chat, and I want to uh, divide this conversation in three broad buckets. One, look at what's been the impact of COVID on companies that uh, we call non-digital native, how they are uh, competing with digital natives, what has been the impact on marketing of these companies, how brand building is being done now. Superna, so being a leader, can throw some light on what CEO, how the role of CEO has changed in the last uh, one and a half years. The second thing we can look at, especially since we have the pleasure of Suparna being here, and she herself has been an ex-marketer all her life, is what is the change, uh, a meaningful change that is uh, that COVID has brought about uh, in the change of a, in the life of a marketer of a CMO. Uh, we can look at that. And the third part, since uh, today's uh, theme is content, and we are we are. And jam, we'll also touch upon how brands have transitioned through the journey of television and print advertising into this new age content from 30, 60 uh, second television commercial eras. We have now come to three second eras, and what are the implications for brands on that? So, thank you again for joining us. Let me uh, get off uh, ground uh, straight away, Suparna, and ask you how have it, the last 18 months been for Titan? Uh, how has the a role for a CEO like yours uh, seen change? Yeah, Naval, um, thanks for that intro. And uh, like you said, the, the, the scene has changed a lot. And from there was a time when, you know, any advertising, any marketing campaign would start with uh, the 30 second or the 60 second television commercial. That would be the start. And then there would be print and hoarding that would support. Then there would be radio that may support then there would be something called activation that you would you know think of consumer uh, you know oriented um, you know contests or some kind of engagement and that would then become the btl which would be you know that's a traditional way in which we used to do this i think uh, this movement has been already in progress in the last one and a half years of completely cemented is the starting point is not the 30 second commercial the starting point is the insight. And then we think of what are the various touch points of the customer with the brand and how each of those customers a, provide a consistent expression of the brand or the launch or whatever it is doing, but also equally importantly, 
completely leverage the possibilities of that particular medium. So for example, I uh, uh, often talk about this. There was a time when there was marketing was just one way, right? The, the company or the brand would just say, this is who I am, this is what my product is, buy me, buy me. Today, uh, it is two way. There is, of course, uh, social media, Insta, Facebook, uh, Twitter, all these uh, platforms in which consumers equally contribute and talk about it. There is the whole thing of influencers, which are some kind of um, customers who behave like brand ambassadors. And then there is the whole piece of uh, information, whereas earlier the information would be something that the company would dispense with, you know, bit by bit, dose by dose. Today, all of the information is right there, out there on the net. Right. On day one and, and in the zero hour, everything is out there. And that leads to people browsing, people searching, people trying. And then that leads to user generated conversation that leads to ratings and reviews. Um, I, you know, often tell my team, no matter what you are doing on TV, the ratings and reviews are what determine customer purchase. So people are going everything, not just services, it could be products, it could be tech, it could be non-tech. I don't go to any restaurant, I don't go to any hotel, I don't buy anything in any platform unless I see the ratings and the reviews. Right. And I actually go through the ratings, I mean, the ratings need to be minimum four plus, but I also go through the reviews. The people who are unhappy with that product, am I likely to be unhappy on that dimension or is that something that doesn't matter to me? So why would we imagine that other consumers like us would not behave like us? They do behave like us. And content, uh, since this is about, you know, the whole thing is about content marketing, is that the, the nucleus on, around which all of this rotates. And um, I would even argue that at some level, even the 30 second commercial is actually a form of content, not the way we had originally imagined it. But if you right. think of content as anything that the company or the brand puts out there and is, um, is a reflection of who they are, and then that, uh, you know, the entire ecosystem kind of builds on it, then, then that's really what content is. So it has been uh, the last 18 months of COVID have been a big accelerator of trends that were already forming and consumers have completely, it's been the tipping point and consumers are now completely comfortable with uh, interacting with brands and products in a very hybrid, fluid and right. digital kind of way. They seamlessly go into online, back into offline, back into online. Some, some people purchase a whole, the whole purchase journey cycle is online. Some people continue to remain who are end-to-end -end physical, and that's fine too. Yes. So I think it is really a very big democratization of the marketing process where marketers no longer control things. And any marketer or any brand that's still trying to control it, we're not going to succeed. You have to let go, but you have to build those conversations, build the content, and then you know, hopefully that will generate that kind of interest in uh, yes. become a force to reckon with. So that's really how I would put it. Now. Yeah, and a democrat, uh, you know, uh, democratization for consumer, uh, for consumers, and you know the brands need to follow that. Uh, and given that you know there's been significant democratization, uh, how does uh, you know a brand realign their strategy for a consumer uh, reach out? You know, today, uh, as opposed to say 20 years back. Uh, as you mentioned, there used to be limited set of platforms to reach out to consumers. Today, you have dozens or perhaps more. On top of that, the entire consumer journey is being done online in many cases. Then the third part of the mix is the consumer attention is both fragmented as well as very short, right? So it's it's like the entire matrix has changed and become significantly complex. So given uh, all of that, how do you see brands uh, realigning their strategy to, you know, study the consumer better, to reach out to the consumer better? Because, you know, uh, advent of digital has made sure there's no place to hide, you know, uh, mistakes get sort of uh, come under spotlight very quickly. 
if you if uh, you know the the chances to do iteration are not as many as they were in the past so but fundamentally what 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 should a brand do to sort of keep pace i think uh, uh, as you mentioned uh, digital is uh, pretty ruthless in the fact that it is out there and everybody can see it and there's nowhere to hide uh, but equally, the, the opportunity in that is that you don't have to go separately looking for insights. The insights are all there. It's there. It's um, the just as the company or the brand is putting out information by every single action of theirs, by every single post or every single reply. Equally, every single consumer is completely unveiled and is totally talking about what matters to her, what doesn't matter to her, what she thinks. And that's invaluable information. You know, earlier again, launch cycles of, uh, of products would mean that first you do, you know, a big research and you go door to door and you collect the data, then you, you do a quality, then you do a quantity, then you put it together. And the whole cycle would be months. That's Today, right. entire campaigns are actually, while the product may take months because there are products where there is a certain um, uh, time that is required to build it. But the, the actual inciting process to arriving at the creative, arriving at the content, producing it, and putting it out there is a matter of days. It's not a matter of months, not even a matter of weeks. A lot of people, uh, especially companies that are not digital native, that are, continue, that are transitioning from uh, 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 all physical to a hybrid kind of model, they still think of weeks as a good, um, you know, timeline, but really agile companies are doing this really, really fast. So one is the speed. The second is that it allows you to do many versions and very fast. So for example, you know, in the old days that one 30 second or 60 second commercial would take, you know, a whole production setup and, you know, the, the cost and the timeline and the location and the the whole jing bang. Is it happening? Yes, it continues to happen. But we know, and we know specifically sometimes when some event happens and overnight, literally over the night, the next morning brands are posting stuff. That's right. Which is relevant, which is interesting, which is bringing them into the radar. So um, it, in a way it has become easier, but in a way it has become harder because if you're given many chances, you know, some of them will work, some of them will not. And like I said, every single arrow that is released actually has an impact on the brand image. So it's a, it's a very interesting place. I think uh, brands and brand teams, uh, marketing teams need to be much more agile, much more year to the ground. When I'm saying ground, the net, also the ground and much more willing and flexible, much uh, more creative. I think creativity is also something that Right. Um, you know, there was a time when a brand logo would be only one color and that's it. And that they would stay with that color for a hundred years. But now, you know, we know brands because it is digital, you can literally have a rainbow of colors over a week or 10 days and celebrate different aspects of the brand. Uh, so really uh, some, many of the formula have, uh, formulae have changed. I do think, and it's important for me to mention here that the principles remain the same. And the principle number one is be focused on the customer. The how, the when, all that has changed, but be focused on the customer, deliver the customer what she really wants and deliver it in the language that she can and on the platform that she anyway consumes. And uh, the rest of it is, you know, the, the basic principles of what you're trying to do is not that different. Absolutely. The fundamentals always remain the same. And the important thing is to rely on the fundamentals and not get distracted by all the noise around. I was uh, doing a conversation a couple of weeks back with Mr. Bhaskar Bhatt. And uh, uh, his, his theory was that, you know, a marketer's job always used to be difficult. It's not that it's become more difficult now. Yes, uh, some complex, complexities have got added. But like you rightly said, it's also easier in some manner, data collection, getting information, getting feedback. You don't have to go through, you know, uh, months of research and on-ground uh, feedback gathering. Uh, I mean, it's right there. And that brings me to the, my next question, which is about how companies, especially as I uh, started by saying, are not digital natives, 
are using uh, information stroke data for their own sort of you know customer reach out efforts because data is a, a huge black box uh, you know what you input in it and uh, the important thing is how you read it what is the output you're gathering tell us uh, you know a company like yours how does titan uh, you know reorient itself uh, to become an info a company that uses data information in a very meaningful manner in a manner that kind of uh, is very useful uh, for uh, you know your cmo to kind of uh, do marketing activities on the fly to tweak product reach out to tweak positioning or even give feedback to your you know product teams to kind of you know keep tweaking uh, what they're doing because this is not this is not built into your dna right you did not grow up uh, data and analytics is not hardwired into uh, many companies yeah having said that it's been a few years and uh, i think one of the things about data is that yeah there are all these things of uh, data as a new oil and people just do things just to capture data uh, it is a bit of uh, you know data that data, data everywhere where is the insight the data by by itself is meaningless right. so um uh, the the drowning in data syndrome uh, one has to kind of put pull one's head out of that data and not allow oneself to be drowned and come out and say how is this data important how is it useful what are the insights that are coming from it so um we use data in a multiple ways we of course have a lot of stored data we have in the in titan company we have uh, more than 1900 stores close to 2000 stores in our division and watches and wearables division we have close to 750 stores so there's a lot of data on what people buy when they buy uh, you know lot of uh, consumer behavior customer behavior is actually apparent there the other source of data is that within the store data, we have our loyalty program call in circle. which is a CRM program, customer yeah. relationship program. And we have a lot of uh, information as well as insight about the customers. Now, one very interesting thing is that it, it's not just the data alone. The data has a human face. So the way we, for example, reach out, uh, and I'll take a simple example, something that we do quite a lot is quite you know, it's quite pervasive in the company is birthday celebrations for our customers. So how is it, how does data help? Data will throw you the birthday celebration. Then there is a process. Uh, and also that process is undergone a change due to COVID. So you, the, but who reaches out to the customer? There is something on the mobile, but our store staff, the one that knows that customer what she buys, what class her daughter is in, when her anniversary is, what, how, how well, uh, uh, how much she liked the last drug or what she wore uh, and bought. So it's a very personal call. So the data is fed to a human face, a human body, not just a human person. Okay. And that person then reaches out and says, Veena, ma'am, tomorrow is your birthday. We would like you to come to our store. We have a small celebration. Please bring your family along. And do, people do. It's not just an impersonal um, machine generated. There is the machine generated. I'm not saying That's that right. there of isn't. Course. But then it is wrapped in human, human touch. And that is the kind of uh, data that really works for us. So we get data from the apps we have, we get data from the customer database, we get data from many, many sources of data. So one is, I, like I said, wrap it in the human uh, interface. And I think the other is um, to join the dots, to, to uncover the important patterns instead of getting lost in that data. So if I am just giving another example, we realized that the, uh, for example, both last year as well as this year, post the COVID waves, the recovery was better in the, or the growth was better in the smaller towns. Now that itself is meaningful, but if you start going into what were people buying, when they were buying it, was it for gifting, was it for sale? Uh, is the smaller town in a north region behaving exactly the same way in south or east or west? Are there cohorts of consumers? So I think 
the, the analysis and the inciting of data is what makes it meaningful. Um, so if you ask, the question that you ended was that we don't have a history of um, analytics. Um, it's yes and no. We have an analytical mindset. We always have. That's right. Um, so yes, the kind of advanced AI ML that is there right now was not there 10 years back, was not even there five years back. But as um, as a team, as an organization, if you're more analytical minded and use data for driving your decisions, uh, and it's not just data, you also intersperse, like I said, the human um, inciting process. And then you can come up with a very robust uh, process and, and very good results that could come out of that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, analytics data information has been used in many forms in the past as well maybe uh, the backbone was not as much technology and hardware or software. I, I recall an example, I, I read uh, I think three, four weeks back about traveler gifted to the Chinese emperor some 2000 years back, uh, a strap of, you know, uh, a strap to be tied on the wrist, which had beads to keep track of, you know, the movement of the sun and the days and the movement of the moon, perhaps the first wearable device uh, ever worn by anybody in the world things were happening even before you know apple came by or amazon happened right so so uh, the world has been uh, and uh, right like you rightly said it is about insights it's not about data it's about uh, using the data in a very meaningful manner let me come to you know what is relevant for today's topic of discussion which is about content and how it's evolved tell us uh, if if you if you can about what are the two three legs on which your content uh, marketing strategy uh, stands what are the few pieces because you know content marketing is now a very vast field you're doing uh, you're interacting across uh, so many platforms with customers and you know i always use this example tv, TV is linear in so many ways that you once you make a 30 second ad you're pretty much running the same thing across maybe 500 channels with a few tweaks here and there at most you'll hire a different superstar for south versus you know the northern regions uh, the content marketing pieces that you do on digital require uh, dozens of iterations, uh, dealing with dozens of platforms, multiple ways of consumer reach out, but there has to be some uniformity in what you're doing, right? There has to be some two, three pillars around which everything is done. So what would be the, those two, three pillars for Titan? Um, I think the first one I would say is a lot of our marketing is, um, I would say category and product led and a lot of I would say the other big mover of that is consumer insights. So consumer engagement, consumer insights. So a lot of the content that uh, that our marketing teams generate are on are on based on these two uh, legs. So uh, if we can make very good content around how a product works, could be watches, could be wearables, could be jewelry, could be anything. And really, what are the advantages? How does it work? The videos, the tutorials, the, the deeper in, uh, understanding, or even the appreciation, like almost like how a connoisseur would go about appreciating uh, different features of assets of a uh, product. Uh, and the second part is what excites consumers? What is the current theme? How can I you know, yes. connect with my consumers on what they are really, talking about what they're thinking about and it's all all of that trail uh, the biscuit crumbs are all on the internet like i said you don't have to go looking that's right to, but it can't be like <clears throat> there is a current trend it has got nothing to do with my category or brand and i'm jumping on the bandwagon that i think people understand they look through it so it has to be something that is genuinely connected with the category and the brand and then you know um kind of organize and develop content around that and really take that forward. And tell us, how is the role of, uh, you know, partners in your ecosystem change? Uh, you know, for example, you've worked with many advertising agencies, you continue to do very good work with them, but evolution of digital, evolution of all these content marketing pieces required you to, you know, work with multiple partners at the same time. So yeah. how has that relationship evolved and changed over the years? Because you can't now just work, have, one agency doing everything for you because you're looking for specialists. 
So what's your expectation from agency partners that has changed? How do you see agency partners? Have they evolved and kept pace with what's happening? So agency partners uh, have to evolve. They have evolved. Uh, of course, we have separate advertising agencies and digital agencies. And we also uh, lean on a lot of other digital content uh, influencers. Many other pieces come together when, uh, when um, uh, any campaign is put together. So it is, uh, it really works like that. Uh, I think everybody has adapted, no doubt. Everybody is adapted. Everybody is much more agile. I think it goes back to what I said right in the beginning that each one of us is a consumer. If you are spending all your time in Instagram reels, why would you think the consumer is not there? That's right. right. <laughs> it's, uh, but, and that's where the ideas come from too. It, that is where the ideas are coming. Absolutely. Let me uh, ask you. Uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm told we are we have limited time. Let Let me ask you, Superna. Last 18 months have seen significant disruption in our lives for businesses, for consumers as well. And uh, you've seen the journey from you know heading categories, being a CMO, to becoming a CMO, a CEO, and you were a CEO even before COVID happened. How is the uh, role of a CEO changed in the last 18 months? What are the things that you're doing that you know pre-COVID would not take your bandwidth and time? I think people, uh, I think people have been um, under tremendous stress and it's just been, it's been such a bizarre time because we've lived through it. We haven't, I mean, of course we also realize it, but this whole digital working and being at home and uh, the whole uh, real fear for safety and safety protocols, vaccinations, uh, uh, financial support for ecosystem partners. We are a big company. A lot of our ecosystem, you know, uh, franchisees or smaller vendor partners. And how do you make sure that they don't go under and they can yeah. kind of weather the storm? So I think it has been really, you know, uh, like a wartime effort. And we are now slowly, gradually moving towards peacetime. But wartime efforts require a very unusual um holding together of people so that they don't kind of uh, fall apart or get get to that stress. That's right. I, I have spent enormous amount of time both digitally communicating as well as traveling a lot. I've traveled a lot, both after the first wave as well as in the second, after the second wave, just meeting people. And, you know, we have factories everywhere. They, uh, people in the factory are coming every day to work. So, uh, you know, it, it means a lot to them that I will show up and kind of, uh, stand there and say that yeah, yes. yeah. Last question before uh, tricky one. Social media has come to rule our lives in many ways, and brands also end up bearing the brunt. What advice do you have for young marketers, for CMOs, who you know work very hard to conceptualize a new campaign and suddenly see it being ripped apart on social media the next day, either being uh, the campaign being disliked or you know being being sort of uh, not like for others and you know that allows social media narrative to sort of drive your brand strategy what does a marketer do in such a case i think one has to have a lot of resilience and it needs a certain uh, coolness you can't just get totally you know taken uh, it it is tough it can be tough if you're on the firing line it is um, it's something that is hard to predict uh, so it's a, it's a, I would say patience, resilience, and, uh, kind of, um, if it's something that you are totally convinced about, then you should hold on. So there are many things, but it's not easy. I mean, I, I, I don't think I have any magic advice to give to anybody. I think each, each person who has faced uh, social media scrutiny have their own ways of dealing with it. But I do want to uh, leave this thought, which is a very common thing that uh, that uh, people talk about, and a lot of it was also talked about for COVID, which are those words, "This too shall pass." So That's don't right. worry. Today you are at the you know the, the eye of the storm. The storm will pass. And the good thing about the social media is a storm is that it passes very quickly, sometimes in a matter of minutes and hours. So you don't have to wait. So thank you so much, Suparna, for giving us your time. Thank you also for chairing the Indian Content Marketing Awards jury. 
later evening, uh, the winners will be announced. And as you will see, the winners come from a vast set of categories this year. Uh, the Content Marketing Awards saw record participation. We had 750 odd entries telling us how brands have really taken to uh, content marketing like fish to water. With that, thank you, Suparna, for joining us. And back to you.